Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. Why did the Bitcoin price explode to $9,400 overnight? That is a great question and we're going to look into it a little bit deeper in this video. Plus, we're also going to talk about market wrap. Bitcoin price tear suggests its fear of missing out time again. And we're going to look at an article called Not Just Bitcoin. Analysis shows crypto whales are heavily accumulating Ethereum. Interesting. And then, of course, the last article we're going to cover is our key article, our featured article, and that is the three key factors why Bitcoin price exploded to $9,400 overnight. So should I buy Bitcoin now or wait? We're going to give you ideas that will help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us out. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, and what we're going to talk about is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And so when it comes to cryptocurrency, it involves substantial risk of loss. Definitely read the rest of this disclaimer. It's really important for you to understand what you're getting into when you invest in cryptocurrency. Now, the current price of Bitcoin is $8,913. It's been kind of fluctuating. It's, it's bumped up above the $9,000 price, bumped down below into the $8,800 price. Right now, it's up 8.5% in the last 24 hours. And the market dominance of Bitcoin has gone up. It's now at 66%. So another way to read this market dominance is Bitcoin's price has increased more than the rest of the cryptocurrency market. In fact, right now you can see that while Bitcoin is heavily in the green, there's a lot of cryptocurrencies out there that are actually showing a loss in the last 24 hours. And so not everything has gone up with this uh, price pump that we've seen in the last 24 hours. Now, my personal opinion or more like a hope, not really an opinion. I hope that we'll see the rest of this market turn green um, because personally, I'm, I'm a pretty equally invested in about 10 different cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is one of the 10, um, but I have more invested in other cryptocurrencies. And so when I see all of this in green, I know that things are really going well in my portfolio. When Bitcoin's the only one or one of the few that's in green, then it makes me go, hmm, I may, I may want to look at things, see where the numbers are. Anyway, market wrap. Bitcoin's price tear suggests it's FOMO time again. There's an old saying on Wall Street that financial markets are driven by two emotions, fear and greed. And that definitely applies to cryptocurrency, not just Wall Street. In the crypto markets, the driver is often a combination of the two, fear of missing out. So FOMO is still a form of fear and greed. It's, you're really acting off of greed when you're, when you're dealing with FOMO. Um, but your, your fear is... Uh, driving you because you don't want to have a lack of action when it's time to be acting. And I think it also applies to Wall Street. I think you often have FOMO when it comes to a Wall Street. It's just not as, uh, what would be the right word? I think focused is the one that comes to my mind. So the FOMO, as it's often called, looked strong Wednesday as Bitcoin jumped to its highest level in nearly two months, rising above $8,900 why, while a buoyant stock market shrugged off bad economic data. At press time, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization was up an eye-catching 14% over the last 24 hours at $8,851. Well, it definitely surpassed that value. 
well above the 10-day and 50-day technical indicator moving averages signaling extreme bullish sentiment. So crypto stakeholders, well, let, let me slow down a little bit. Let's take a quick look at this chart. This chart covers, uh, I believe this one was the last five days. Uh, da, 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 I don't see it. I think this one was the last five days, strain, stretching from April 27th. So really not five days, three days. This is a three-day chart. Um, and you can see how over the last three days, Bitcoin had kind of been flatlining, just going straight across, not doing much up or down. And then yesterday, the 29th is when it started its progression up and it hit on this chart. Let's see if we can get that thing to go away. It doesn't look like it's going away, but it looks like it hit around 88850 8, bucks. So crypto stakeholders continue to talk up the upcoming halvening, an event that happens as often as the Olympic Games or a U.S. presidential election, and for many Bitcoiners is more important than either. Around May 12th, the amount of new Bitcoin mined every 10 minutes or so will drop by 50%. And so if you're a miner, your income is going to drop by 50%. Every 10 minutes... A new block is created and it's added to the Bitcoin chain and miners get paid a fee for, for taking care of that, that activity of adding the new block. And right now, uh, this doesn't get into the details. So right now that fee is 12.5 Bitcoin for creating a new block. And after the halvening, uh, that fee fee is going to drop down to 6.25 Bitcoin. And so uh, it happens like one block, it was 12.5, the next block at 6.25. And so it's a pretty hefty drop. A regularly scheduled adjustment that has followed by price increases, the, the first two happenings were 2012 and 2016. And within 12 to 18 months after those happenings, the price of Bitcoin hit new all-time highs. The last all-time high was December 2017, so about 18 months after the 2016 halvening, and Bitcoin hit $20,000 per Bitcoin. Now today it's riding around $8,000 per Bitcoin, so it's had better than a 50% drop in value since it hit that previous all-time high. Possibly in anticipation of history repeating itself in the past five days, Bitcoin has logged a 21% price appreciation. Now, the media coverage of the halvening over the last five months, combined with continually increasing Google search volume for Bitcoin halving, suggests that we may see a similar FOMO or fear of missing out around the upcoming halvening event, said Danny Kim head of revenue for crypto liquidity provider SFOX. So kind of interesting. I think that uh, it's not just about fear of missing out. I think a lot of people are learning more and more about the happening and saying, hey, this could be a great opportunity for me to get involved. Now, uh, that's just my opinion about what people are thinking and why they're investing in Bitcoin. Uh, so anyway, not just Bitcoin, analysts show crypto whales are heavily accumulating Ethereum. So I thought this was really interesting. Crypto whales aren't stopping with Bitcoin. Data indicates large crypto investors are also accumulating Ethereum at a rapid pace. Adam Cochran, an executive at the privacy-focused search engine DuckDuckGo, says he manually audited the top 10,000 Ethereum addresses to examine the second biggest crypto assets, whale activity, liquidity, profitability, and market manipulation. Cochran says existing whales have increased their Ethereum positions by more than $550 million, or 4%, in the past six months. Now, compared with, to the estimated total of $600 million in new capital influx on Bitcoin, had across all of last year. And so he's using a particular measurement, and with that particular measurement, 
he noticed that Ethereum had gone up by 550 million in the past six months, whereas Bitcoin went up 600 million in the past year. And so Ethereum looks like it's definitely outpacing Bitcoin in terms of the number of large investors. These are institutions. And it's not just existing whales who are accumulating, according to the DuckDuckGo executive. There are a significant number of new wallets in the top 10,000 who had their first transaction associated with fiat on-ramp exchanges that serve large-scale customers, mostly Gemini, Kraken, and Coinbase. The new addresses often bought $100,000 to $250,000 worth of Ethereum, and they represent around 6% of the top 10,000 addresses or approximately $100 million in new Ethereum purchases in the past six months. Combined, new and existing whales have bought more than $650 million in new Ethereum purchases across the past half year, more than the entire Bitcoin inflow total in all of 2019. And the data indicates those big investors don't seem interested in selling their Ethereum holdings either. So these guys are buying and holding. Now they might be holding because they want to do Ethereum staking when Ethereum 2.0 comes out and becomes available. Because by doing Ethereum staking, not only do they benefit from any price increases in Ethereum, but they will also benefit from getting uh, a compounded interest Uh, from staking Ethereum. So it'll be interesting to see how all of this plays out in the future. Now, three key factors why Bitcoin's price exploded to $9,400,000 overnight. Now, obviously, it didn't hold that price from $9,400. It's hovering right around $8,900, and so it's had a bit of a drop. Spot exchanges drove Bitcoin to $9,500, not the futures market. In crypto, the term spot exchange refers to a platform that facilitates fiat to crypto trades. On Binance and Coinbase, for instance, users can trade Bitcoin with U.S. dollars or stable coins like Tether without leverage. Volumes coming from spot exchanges are not inflated by leveraged or borrowed capital. Spot volumes typically demonstrate authentic retail demand and they often increase during an accumulation phase. Unlike past rallies, the recent upsurge of Bitcoin was primarily led by spot volumes. Binance and Coinbase saw record high daily volumes as shared by Binance CEO Shanpeng Zhao. And so the thing that I want to kind of focus on with this is this jump to $9,500 was not driven by uh, some sort of leveraged liquidation. You know, in the last six months or a year, a lot of the quick or large gains in uh, the price of Bitcoin or large drops in the price of Bitcoin. And when I say Bitcoin in this context, I'm really talking about the entire cryptocurrency market because it's affected by Bitcoin and some of the other largest of the cryptocurrencies. Um, but the, the, the key thing is, is that it wasn't because accounts were getting liquidated that leveraged uh, borrowers uh, were not having their accounts liquidated because they had gone short on Bitcoin, but rather the volume is because of retail investors buying more and more Bitcoin. Now, in the previous all-time highs, all of them have been driven by the retail market. And we may see the retail... I'd always thought that the next all-time high would be driven by institutional investors. But I've noticed over the last year, as I've been watching institutional investors invest more and more money into cryptocurrency, they have a way of doing that with causing little or no effect in the price. And so they're trying to accumulate crypto without increasing or decreasing the price. Um, And a lot of the price increases, a lot of the big jumps up and down over the last year to two years 
has been because people would do leverage trading either by borrowing crypto or by uh, buying crypto. And then those accounts, as the prices fluctuated with cryptocurrency, those accounts would get liquidated because they made a bad leveraged call. And by liquidating one, it caused another to liquidate it because the price bumped up or bumped down. It went in a particular direction as that account got liquidated and it bought out or sold out all of the different assets at that particular price level, forcing the price to go up or down. And it just became a domino effect and a whole bunch of accounts got liquidated. You know, 20 million, 200 million, 500 million dollars worth of accounts were liquidated in a matter of minutes over the last year or so. We've seen it happen time and time again. So I'm really glad to see that in this case, it was the spot volumes and the retail investors who were actually purchasing Bitcoin and pushing the price up. The relatively low volume on Bitcoin on futures exchanges and the dominance of spot platforms indicate that the upsurge from 7,700 to 9,500 was organic. And an organic price change is a much stronger indicator in terms of you know, relative price and value uh, than one that's being forced because accounts are getting liquidated. Because again, the liquidation just tends to be a domino effect, whereas this organic tends to be more of a reflection of public interest. And it's public interest, especially in the retail market, that I it's beginning to look more and more like it's going to be the retail market that pushes Bitcoin to new all-time highs. I really did think it would be uh, institutional investors, and I'm, I'm less and less convinced that the institutions will be pushing the price high, higher, even though the institutions are buying Bitcoin and holding it and taking it off of the market which the end result means that when retail investors go to buy Bitcoin, there's less available supply. And the long-term result is that will push the price up. Um, so I guess in some senses, the institutions are helping move the price up, but not in the way that I thought. I really thought that we would see price increases like yesterday's jump to 9,000 affected by institutions. The 100 and 200 day move, moving averages and the 0.618 Fibonacci true retracement level were all broken simultaneously yesterday as the price of Bitcoin hit that $9,000 level. And so here's the Fibonacci retracement level. And then you can see here is the um, 100 and 200 day moving averages, simple moving averages. And so all of that converged and got broken pretty much all at the same time. And there it is, the test, the 100, the Fibonacci level, the 100 and 200 day moving averages all in one fell swoop. Blunt said, question is, what happens from here? When Bitcoin surpasses important resistant areas without any pullback, it indicates that a stronger upside movement awaits. Consequently, when Bitcoin first hit 8,000, it went up to uh, as high as 9,500 swiftly. So here's the, the next point. So these, this guy's making three separate key factors as to why Bitcoin exploded. That was the first one was retail. Now he does talk about institutional uh, demand acted as a safety net. In the first quarter of 2020, the key narrative around Bitcoin was the accumulation of Bitcoin by institutional investors. The quarterly report of Grayscale, which operates the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, said that 88% of investments came from institutions. Now, you got to understand, this is just Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is if you if you have a stock market account, maybe you have a trade station, E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, uh, Charles Schwab or one of the others, your, your everyday stock market account can purchase the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. On the stock market, it's actually the ticker symbol GBT. Um, and when you purchase that, you're actually investing in the Grayscale Trust. But 
their information indicates that 80%, 88% of the people who are buying that particular fund, the GBT, GBTC fund, uh, that 88% of them are institutions. And so in the same period, the assets under management of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust hit a new all-time high of $3 billion, according to its CEO, Barry Silbert. And this last quarter, when they reported their quarterly report, was the largest quarter, quarter for Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And so with 88% of that volume being pushed in by institutions, we could see that institutions were making some major moves in the first quarter. But when you looked at the timing of everything, we didn't see significant price increases around uh, those purchases. 88% of inflows this quarter came from institutional investors, the overwhelming majority of which were hedge funds, said the investment firm. The gradual, gradual increase of inflow into, in capital into institutional products at grayscale since January 2020 indicates that institutions consistently invested in Bitcoin throughout the first quarter. A significant increase in organic Retail demand resulting in the surging spot volume, the breach of key resistance level, and the accumulation of institutions created a perfect storm for Bitcoin ahead of pushing it above the $9,000 price range. And so quite an interesting deal. I also wanted in this video at the end was going to give, decided to give an update on the Bitcoin block having, the, the Bitcoin halving. And the halving is happening on the 12th of May of 2020. They're estimating it'll happen at 12.39 and 45 seconds UTC time. And I say they're guessing at that time simply because it's, it, each block sometimes takes more time, sometimes takes less time. It all depends on how long it takes the different miners to solve that particular a math problem involved with that particular block. And so they're typically 10 minutes, but sometimes they can take a little bit longer and a little bit shorter, which means that this particular time is more likely an estimate. Now the, the date, May 12th, is likely to hold, but given that this is really close to midnight, maybe it drops back to May 11th or um, stays stays right in the middle of May 12th. Is that midnight or is that at noon? That could be noon. If it's noon, it's, it's very likely it's going to stay with the May 12th. So anyway, that is the news today. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts, comments, anything that I can help you with? I would love to be of service to you. Please leave your polite disagreements or your comments or suggestions in the comment section below. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.